So in surveying, one of the most common applications um, and, and calculations with property surveys is to measure the boundaries of a traverse or a lot and determine what the area is. Now, in this example, we have, I'll put the x and y coordinates are here, okay? And this is just an example, this is not taken from an actual survey, but from a survey, one of the outputs of a survey is, you know, you take distances and angles and you convert those values to coordinates, okay? North, 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 south, north, south, east, west. Okay, so if we go through and we did say we did a survey where we surveyed the perimeter of a of a lot, okay, of a traverse, and then we convert all those readings to coordinates, we would have something that looks like this. So you can see at point one, the coordinate is 30 feet, 30 feet. At point two, it's 40 feet, 70 feet. Point three, it's 90, 100. And then at point four, we have 100 foot and 200. Those are, those are all x and y coordinates. Or they could be eastings and northings if you want to see that one. Okay. Now, again, one of the most common applications is now that you've done the survey and you've established the coordinates, the owner of the property wants to know, or maybe the bank wants to know, what is the acre? What's the area? Okay. Now, we could always step back and look at these coordinates. And based on these coordinates, we could break up this object into a series of of triangles and rectangles and try to figure out what the change in X and Y's are for the different shapes. And nothing's wrong with that. And that could be used for, a, it could actually give you a very accurate number, but it's going to be quite tedious. Another approach to do this is called the coordinate area method. Now sometimes it's also referred to as the alternative coordinate method, depending on which textbook. Okay. For this video, we're just going to refer to that as the coordinate method. And it basically says that twice the area is equal to, and then what you do is we set up these calculations where we're writing the x and y coordinates at each point okay, as a fraction. So we have the x at point 1 of 30, the y at point 1 of 30. Okay. Then we have at point 2, we have an x of 40, a y of 70. Point three, we have an x of 90 and a y of 100. At point four, we have an x of 100 and a y of 20. And then last but not least, we repeat the first one. So your very first point, you repeat. So there we have the 30 over 30. Okay. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go through and this technique says that you're going to go through and you're going to sum all the solid lines. Okay. The solid lines will be we multiply these products out. Okay. And then we're going to subtract out the dashed line. So the dashed lines are, for example, y2 times x2, I'm sorry, y1 times x2, y2 times x3, and so forth. Okay, these are the dashed lines. So you have the solid lines that are going down from left to right. You have the dashed lines that are going up from left to right, like that. Okay. And then all we have to do now is just pretty much just start multiplying all this out. So I'm going to move this over just a little bit because I have all this space over here. So what I have now to start with is I have 30 times 70. That's this first product. Then I'm going to have 40 times 100. My next one will be 90 times 20. And I'm going to have 100 times 30. Okay. That's all the solid lines. So again, 30 times 70, 40 times 100, 90 times 20, 100 times 30. I have them all there. Now I'm subtracting out all the dashed lines, okay, which will start with 30 times 40. And then we have... 70 times 90. And we have 
have 100 times 100. And we have 20 times 30. Okay. So everything in this square bracket represents the sum of the product of, this, of the solid lines, right? Everything here in the second bracket represents the sum of the product of all the dashed lines, right? I'm just making sure I have four for each one. Then it's just number crunching. So if I set this up, you have 30 times 70 is 2,100. 40 times 400 is 4,000. 90 times 20 is 1,800. 100 times 30 is 3,000. Okay, that's what we have for, again, that's the sum of the solid lines. And we're going to subtract out the dashed lines now. So the dashed lines are 30 times 40 is 1,200. 70 times 90 is 6,300. 100 times 100 is 10,000. And then 20 times 60 is 600. So when I sum this up, what I end up getting is I get 2A is equal to all the solid lines come out to be 10,900. All the dashed lines come out to be 18,100. Okay. Or we end up with A is equal to 3,600. Now, in this case, it would be square feet, okay? I should have mentioned all these have units of feet. The units here are in feet of all these coordinates, okay? So again, this is a really, really simple technique for calculating the area within the traverse. And again, a lot of times, if you look at a real at property surveys and all that, you don't you're not necessarily going to always have right angles and, and squares and rectangles and perfect triangles. So this is a really useful technique because once you can survey in the boundary and get those coordinates, either with a GPS unit or using a total station setup at some point where you're shooting distances and angles, however you get those coordinates, once you have these coordinates, it's a real straightforward technique for calculating the area. And our final result, when we sum up all the solid lines and the dashed lines, we ended up with 3,600 square feet. That concludes this example of computing traverse area using the coordinates.